Hold. Hold. He's being a little sloppy here. Hold. Good. All right, guys, so we are back for Legend's next session. In his last session, we just started collar conditioning to fetch, and we're gonna be moving forward with that. He did a really good job. We gave him just a little bit of time off. I think uh, he's had two days now of not a whole lot. We talk about this. We wanna make sure and give them time off in between sessions, especially those challenging ones. So we're gonna do a little refresher here for him. Uh, we used the toe hitch last time as a just in case you didn't do what you were supposed to. We have this as the backup plan because he knows what this means. We're essentially overlaying both things at the same time. Collar pressure at the same time as the toe hitch pressure in this transition to being 100% collar condition to fetch. Now, if this is your first time to the channel or you're finding this video first, guys, go ahead and go back to the beginning. We show step-by-step -step how we started with this guy and subscribe to the channel. Now, we're gonna get rolling. We've got the collar set on like a three, four range. We're gonna use nicks on the collar, just like we did last time when we've been using the toe hitch here. It's a tug, tug, tug. We're gonna be using a tap, tap, tap on the collar. So it's gonna look like this, tap, 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 tap. He's feeling just a little bit of toe pressure there. Good, and we're gonna try one without the fetch. Good, fetch, no toe hitch at all. He's responding right here in the easy zone with just the collar. We saw that last time. Then when we moved away from this end of the table, that's when things got a little more challenging. So we're gonna move into that now. I've got this still here. Now guys, this is no longer wrapped up around his toes. He's kind of like a, a toe hitch Houdini. We've seen this all the way along the way. Every time I turn around, the thing is untwisted. But we've got this here, and this gives him a gentle reminder of there's some pressure, but there's no actual toe pinching here. It's just like, oh yeah, I remember when my leg was getting tugged on that I need to be fetching, good. Now, as I am, so that you know, I'm going to be nick, 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 as soon as I ask for fetch, it's gonna happen. The collar's going to turn on, I'm going to say fetch, and it's going to run through him actually picking up and holding onto the object. So we're gonna start moving down the table here. Fetch, hey, come back now, fetch, good. Now I'm gonna tell you everything that we teach these guys in this process is like, a whole new language. Each individual step is teaching something new. With him specifically, you just saw he didn't want to fetch it going that way, but he turned around and fetched it coming back. Now this is something I want you to use to your advantage. Don't fight it. If he doesn't want to fetch going that way to begin with, we're not going to ask for it. We're going to get him down that way and have him fetch coming back. Dogs become directional. Dogs get sucked into specific objects, and when we are teaching, we wanna make it as easy as possible for them. So, we'll come down here, and we lost his toe hitch, fetch. Still using collar, nick, nick, good. Now, he's grabbing that out of my hand. We don't need that to become a reliant thing, but we can take some baby steps. Hold, hold. He's being a little sloppy here, hold. Good, come on. Fetch, good. Now, we had a comment, ah, good. We had a comment, um, negative reinforcer there for doing something wrong. There was an additional collar, it was just a growly, ah, quit that, don't drop it, don't set it down. We had a comment in the last video that was up, said, um, me not using a release cue or command was wrong and I shouldn't be teaching you that. Well, the reason that we did, and I did explain this when we started working through our hold videos, is anytime we apply cues to it, the dogs are going to figure out and anticipate what we're asking and they're going to jump the gun. They anticipate everything. So I don't want there to be any cues involved with it. I want you to hold on to it, hold until I'm ready to take it from you. And in these early stages, if he's ready to resist a little bit, that's really good. And then when I take it out of his mouth, he gives it up to me. Um, what we run into, a lot of these things were designed around testing dogs. And we've had issues with dogs at tests where I'm in an honoring situation, the dog's standing there, and 
They're watching the situation go down from like 10 or 15 yards away, and the other handler says, fetch! And my dog says, okay! So we try and eliminate as much big verbal um, influence to what we're asking them to do, a little more of a physical touch aspect of things, and it requires hands-on here as opposed to a verbal from over there that can make something happen. So we're gonna try another rep going this way. Good, fetch. Get my hand out of here, good boy. That's a little sloppy. We need to fix it. Now, the couple things to look at here is one, he is fetching. He is responding to the caller, but he's also shown us that he has a really good um, desire to do what's going on here. So what we need to end up doing is actually proofing this process. And what I'm gonna show you right now is how we end up proofing all caller conditioning. We are going to start with He's proven on a couple up and downs here that he will fetch things. Now, is he responding to the collar? We don't 100% know because you don't know that he's even feeling it. He's not showing any physical or visual cues to us to say, okay, he's for sure feeling that and he's responding to it. Legend is a little bit tougher dog. I've been running the collar on a 3-4, which isn't a level that would normally um, be aversive to him, but... He is getting reps where he's feeling the collar. We know for sure that that is the case. And now we're going to end up proofing the collar. How we do this is we're going to use more. We're gonna to push to the level where we kind of float the line of uh, him understanding and pushing into that overwhelming category. If you use too much collar, it's going to overwhelm the dog and that's not a good thing. But we have to float that line because when we get out in the field, there's gonna be higher levels of distraction and if it's the first time out there that we've used any additional collar, even though he's pretty much doing things, you're gonna have problems. So we are on that three, four. We're gonna say fetch, good. Now we're gonna go up a couple clicks. Fetch, good, fetch. Now we're gonna go up a couple clicks, fetch. All right, that right there. That right there is all we need. He went up and up and up, and then you saw this like kind of, yeah, ah, that's floating that line of um, where we're borderline overwhelming him. Where he had a little bit of vocalization, it was a ah, ah. So we're right at that point where it says, this is almost too much, dad. You need to maybe back it down a little bit. And then we're gonna go down from what we just worked up to a couple clicks and we're gonna do a few reps. So fetch, good. There's no vocalization. There's none of that kind of like overwhelmed trying to figure out what to do. And now we have a better working level, but he's proven to us he can shut off that higher level and work through it. Where if his response to higher collar pressure was to avoid, was to look elsewhere, was to do anything but fetching, then we don't have a good understanding yet. And we actually just have a dog that's confused. We don't wanna be there. So let's do a few more reps with him and then we'll call this session it. Again, trying to make things easier for him. Fetch, going back the direction he wants to. Later, good, we will fix going this direction. Right here, trying to put separation for me. Fetch, good. Ah, so as soon as he kind of set that down, Tap, tap, tap on the collar again, using momentary or your nick button. Today we're using DT Systems H2O 1820 collar. It's a great rechargeable unit. We use them pretty much all of our training. Fetch, good, nice job. Getting more separation between him and I. We're gonna try and do a little more yet, okay. Come on back down here. I'm gonna leave that one down there. I'm gonna get him turned around. Fetch, wow. That was really good, other than your finish there, bud. Hold, let's do one more. Good, nice grip on that now. We need you to grab it that way, big guy. Come on. All right, there's our bumper. Turn around here, fetch. Good, much better. There's his little fix, that's his signature move. I'm gonna flip it in my mouth a little bit. But what we saw here was really big progress, good. We were able to do some reps in the beginning where we could see 100% he was fetching with the collar, but was he 100% responding to it? Eh, that's when we move into proofing the collar and you have to do that to understand, yes, he understands collar pressure and what he's supposed to do. More collar pressure 
helps him to do it faster, not overwhelms him or confuses him. So he did it a little faster. We got that one rep where I went, yep, that's what we needed. And then we backed it back down. Those are all of the things to work through with collar conditioning. Now what we'll end up moving into with him is more objects. We're gonna try and get him to work that way. And we'll start sending him to multiple objects down the table, piles, we'll work in birds. And then we're about off the table, folks. Yeah, that's all we have for this episode. The guy with the pink gun, this is Legend, and we'll both see you in his next video.